Hello, so here I'm going to be showing you guys how you can make a sliding door using two buttons and the prop mover device. So to get started, uh, we're going to be using what's called a prop mover device. This is what's going to allow us to move our props and we're going to be using a door as a prop. Uh, if you go to the Fortnite folder, sorry, and devices, you can search for prop mover. And it's this little cube uh, with some arrows sticking out of it. So just drag one of those and like that. Okay, uh, so for the actual logistics, I'm gonna be moving, uh, you know, moving my door uh, up and down. Just sort of gonna simulate, uh, I guess, a gate opening. Uh, so if you go to your prop mover, we have this blue arrow. And this blue arrow basically tells you the direction uh, that your prop is gonna be moving. In this case, it's going to be moving left. But since I want my door to be moving up and down, I'm going to first position it wherever I want it to start. So I'm going to be, I'm going to have it start here and then press E on your keyboard and you can rotate this to go down. All right. So it's going to, so it's going to start from here and move down. And how far does it move? Well, we can actually click this and go to the details panel here. And this is where we can see a bunch of options. First of which is the distance. Now this distance is measured in in meters. So if you're gonna look at this, uh, just, just, just be careful because it's in meters, uh, but I'm gonna show you guys how to change this or how to actually specify the distance. Okay, so uh, let's say for example, I am starting here. And since I'm gonna be moving this up and down, I'm gonna be using this blue in the location, this blue uh, Z coordinate. And I know this is the Z coordinate because if you go down here in the bottom left corner of your actual viewport, you can see this little grid uh, axis thing and you can see Z goes up and down. Now, it, depending on which direction you're facing, you're either going to be facing the Y direction or the X direction. As you can see, uh, my little view thing, the X is uh, in the front, so it's forwards and backwards uh, if I'm facing here and it's red, so we would use the red one or the Y, which is facing uh, forwards and backwards. And in this case, X is left and right, and you would change those appropriately. But since I'm going with the up and down approach, I'm just gonna be using the Z here. That's what I'm gonna be using. So take note of my uh, initial position, it's 390. And I'm just gonna position this where I would want it to end. So if I just press end on my keyboard, that's gonna lock onto the floor. And now I just put zero. Okay, so we have zero and our starting position was 390. You can subtract both and just take the absolute value of that to get your distance. In my case, that's going to be 390 total because 390 minus zero is just well 390. All right. Now, like I said, uh, this is measured in centimeters or this change is measured in centimeters. So if you actually want to convert it to meters, just whatever you got. So in my case, it was 390 and divide that by 100. So you're, I'm going to get 3.9. And that is my total distance. Okay, next one uh, should move from start. If you select this, your prop is going to move uh, the moment you start your game. If you want that, go ahead and uh, put that. And you can actually choose a delay. So this will be in seconds. So if I were to put two, it's going to start two seconds after you actually start your game. But I'm going to be using buttons to control this. So I'm not going to choose that. And here we have more options, uh, notably the collision behavior options. These basically we have an on AI and on player and an on prop collision. So anytime uh, your prop uh, collides into one of these, you can specify its behavior. So if, for example, it were to collide on an AI, you can specify to stop by default. I'm just going to go on none just so we can just go to town. Same with a player. If there's a player, you can specify to stop or you can do none and prop damage collision, uh, sorry, on prop collision behavior. If there's another prop in the way, you can tell it to stop or I'm just going to put none here, uh, but you can change that accordingly. All right. And now we actually get to our actual user functions, which are going to allow us to actually move our prop. So there's a lot here. Start just basically starts it uh, from here. Stop, uh, stops your prop. So anytime you would, uh, so anytime this function would trigger, your prop mover stops. Reset, what it does is if 
your prop is somewhere else, it's going to instantly teleport it back to the original position. But the ones we're going to use here are advance and reverse. Advance, well, as you can probably guess, will advance it forwards. And forwards is going to be defined by whatever direction the arrow is facing in your actual UEFN editor. So since it's down, uh, that's going to advance would move our prop down. And conversely, reverse would move our prop in the opposite direction of the arrow. So it would be move it up. Now to actually fire off these functions, we need a trigger or any sort of trigger that actually triggers and if it <laughs> trigger, trigger, trigger. I'm going to be using a button. So go to your devices here and look up button. You can use any trigger, but I'm going to just going to be using a button. And as you can see, it says uh, which can trigger other devices. Okay, so we'll grab this like so. Then I'm going to alt drag this to clone it. All right. I'm going to use this one to, uh, let's say close. So push it down. So I'm going to go up here, press F2, call it BTN underscore close. And then select this, go here, press F2, BTN underscore open. All right. Um, so we have that now to actually bind these to the functions here. You go back to your prop uh, mover device here. Okay, user option functions. And like we said, we're gonna be using our advanced. Okay, so to actually bind it, we're gonna first uh, add an element to the array. Okay, so we put button close and you wanna specify it on interact. Remember the advance is gonna move it uh, based on the arrow, so it's gonna move it down. So that matches with our button close. And the same with the reverse, which should open our door. So choose button open and on interact. So anytime we interact with a button, that's going to fire off the event, which is going to trigger this reverse function. All right, so that's basically it. Uh, now I actually need a prop, which is actually movable. In my case, I'm going to create a prop and go to my folder. I'm just going to right click and create a blueprint class. And you can select building prop here. And just rename it whatever. I'm just gonna call it prop underscore slide door. All right. Now we're gonna need this because, uh, for example, if you were to just drag a let's face, for example, just a random cube here, uh, that's not gonna move because this is not technically a prop. This is just uh, oh, just a cube, so this wouldn't move. So that's why we had to create this prop. Or I believe all these uh props in the Fortnite props folder will work with this uh but i'm going to create this uh just so i can actually specify its static mesh which um, if i go in you can see there's nothing and that's because we need to go here in the top left corner and add a static mesh just all right now you can go to the right here on the details panel and select whatever mesh you want uh you can select i don't know buttons lens spheres or any mesh you've imported but in my case i'm just gonna choose a cube now if you've had imported a skeletal mesh or um, any sort of character you can just search up for skeletal mesh and then you would be able to specify here but here i'm just gonna be using a cube so just this and you can select its material here. Uh, so I'm just gonna go with a simple white texture, just simple thing. And I'm just gonna resize it to roughly what my door would look like. All right, and now you can hit compile and save that and go back here. Okay, now if you actually go to our content drawer, you can see that the static mesh here is within the preview. Okay, so here I'm just positioning my actual doorway um, and I'm going to position it near the prop mover. And that's because the prop mover is only going to be able to move one prop at a time. And the prop that's going to be chosen is the one that's nearest to the center. You can see this uh, circle, which is or this sphere, sorry, which is the radius. Any prop within that radius is going to be moved. If there's only one, the only one's going to be moved. But if there's more than one, uh, the one that's closest to the center is going to be moved. So with that, I'm just going to position it and we should be able to play test this thing. Okay. So I'm going to be starting my game, press escape and then start game. And like we said, we bind it this F1 to be the move forward. So it's going to close our door. 
So we press that, and it's going to close it. And if we press this one, it's going to reverse, or it's just going to open this. And as you can see here, I can just walk through it. <laughs> it's not an optical illusion. If I close it again, I can't walk through it anymore. So that's nice. Now, one other thing I do want to touch on is that uh, technically uh, it has, so from its starting position, you can either reverse it or advance it once. So if you can see here, I cannot advance it once. But if I return it to the original position, you can actually see that if I press the reverse button, it'll actually go once more. All right. But if I press it again, it won't be able to eat because that's one from the actual starting position. And again, if I had, you can advance it forwards and you can advance once if I press a button, but I cannot do that more than once from the starting position. So yeah, that's a little quirk with this. And yeah, one other thing is that, um, yeah, this design uses two buttons. Um, and that's because uh, you can't really bind two events to one. You can, uh, but it, it would just bug out and just do nothing. Um, there's a way you can use what, just one button, but that uses Verse, uh, which is the programming language. Uh, it's nothing too complicated, but I can make a video on that if that would be of interest. But yeah, that's basically it for this. And...